Good morning. I welcome you in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to this service of worship, and I pray that you will be blessed as, as we worship together, as we worship God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 97. The Lord reigns, let the earth rejoice, let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around them. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and burns up his adversaries all around. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. Amen. Let us worship God together as we sing our first hymn, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to Thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, Holy Trinity. Holy, 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 all the saints adore Thee, casting down their golden crowns around the glossy sea. Cherubim and seraphim falling down before thee, who were and are and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 though the darkness hide thee, Though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see. Only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, perfect in power, in love and purity. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy works shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Come, let us bow our heads in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, it is such a wonderful privilege this morning to come into your wonderful mighty presence. Oh, Father, we praise and thank you for this day. Yes, Lord, the air is cold, but yet, Lord, we thank you for the blue sky and the beautiful bright sunshine. For, Father, the sunshine gives us a promise that this day will warm up. 
And Lord, too, we just thank you that we have this privilege of coming into your presence to glorify and honor your name. For Father, we know that when we worship you, that through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will warm our hearts as we glorify and praise your wonderful name. Oh, Father, thank you for the privilege that although we are unable to gather in the church this morning, Father, that we can gather at our homes and experience and know your presence with us. And Father, we know that as we worship and glorify your name, Lord, that we are human. And Lord, that we have failed you and that we have sinned against you. And so, Father, in the name of Jesus this morning, we pray, Lord, that you will forgive us for all sin which we may have committed in word, deed, and thought, and that which we have left undone. Oh, Lord, we would pray that you will cleanse us through the precious blood of Jesus Christ this morning, Heavenly Father. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you will cleanse us from all sin, past, present, and future. Oh Lord, forgive us for our disobedience to your word. And forgive us, Lord, for the unforgiveness in our hearts towards those whom you love. Oh Father, by the blood of Jesus Christ, cleanse us this morning. And Lord, as we come into your presence this morning, we pray for the overwhelming presence of your Holy Spirit. For Father, we know that it is not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. And so Holy Spirit, we pray, pour yourself out upon us. And Lord, at this time, we pray for those who are sick. And Father, we know of those who are sick with COVID. Oh Father, may they know your presence and may you heal them, Lord, as they struggle, as they try to defeat this virus. Lord, you know of others who may not have COVID but are just sick. Father, we pray. May your hand of grace and healing come upon them. And Father, too, we pray for hope at this time, especially for those who have lost loved ones to death. Oh, Father, may you comfort them. May you strengthen them. And may they have a knowledge of your grace and presence. And Lord, this morning we pray for your church. We pray, Lord, that despite the fact that we cannot gather in the church building, I pray, Lord, that we will know that we are the church in our homes and that you are present with us by the power and grace of your Spirit. But Lord, in these difficult times, we also pray for revival upon your church. Oh, Father, we pray that, that when this COVID comes to an end, that we may gather together in the church, and that together as men and women, as children, that we may glorify the name of Jesus Christ. And so, Lord, may you be very present with us this morning through the power and grace of your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I pray this morning as we come to the preaching of your word, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will guide us as we try to understand your word. And we pray that your word will strengthen and guide us this morning. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. David is recorded in the Holy Bible. He conquered Goliath as he made a powerful confession about God. In 1 Samuel chapter 17 verses 45 to 47 it reads, Then David said to the Philistines, You come to me with the sword and with the spear and with the javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give 
the dead bodies of the host of the Philistines this day to the birds of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel and that all this assembly may know that the Lord saves not with sword and spear for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hand. However, the Holy Bible is very cautious to record the humanity of David. Nonetheless, there are glimpses at times of his clay feet. In our story today, he lied to the high priest, which had a very violent consequence for the priests of Nob. David was not the greatest father in the world, especially as the significance of this was that his son Absalom conspired against him to overthrow him as king of Israel. And probably the most famous incident in the Holy Bible is when David commits adultery with Bathsheba and he has her husband killed. David was a human with clay feet who disappointed God because there were times that he submitted to sin. Nonetheless, he was a humble man who would confess his sin to God and the Father in his grace and mercy would forgive David. Although he had clay feet, David had great faith in the divine ability and provision of God. It reads in 1 Samuel chapter 21 verses 1 to 2. Then David came to Nob, to, ah, to Ahimelech the priest. And Ahimelech came to meet David, trembling, and said to him, Why are you alone and no one with you? And David said to Ahimelech the priest, The king has charged me with a matter and said to me, Let no one know anything of the matter about which I send you and with which I have charged you. I have made an appointment with the young men for such and such a place. So David's first stop as he was fleeing from Saul was the city of Nob where he goes to Ahimelech, the high priest, to gather supplies. David particularly needs food and weapons. Ahimelech trembles with fear when David comes to meet with him alone. He obviously suspects something is wrong. He asks David, why are you alone? Why is no one with you? Instead of telling him the truth. David lies to the high priest. He tells Ahimelech he is on a special mission from the king and asks him for bread for him and his men. In the David and Saul narrative, there is a problem of lying several times. David, Jonathan, and Michal. David's wife, all tell lies in order to prevent themselves and each other from Saul. There is several examples in scripture where people told lies in extreme situations in order to save lives. The Bible does not explicit, explicitly condemn those people who felt compelled to lie in extreme situations, but it never approves of their lying. A lie is still a lie, even when told with good motivations to protect someone else. It's important to remember that the Bible doesn't record these lies to teach us that it is okay to lie. The Bible records these lies because the people involved lied. The Bible doesn't cover that up. In other words, the Bible is being truthful about people who lied. The author Eugene Peterson reminds us, David isn't and 
David's isn't an ideal life, but an actual life. David's isn't an ideal life, but an actual life. David's life as recorded in scripture is a real life. David is a real person. And real people make mistakes. Real people mess up. Real people sin. Real people tell lies. And God loves us anyway. Now, it could be David lied to Ahimelech, hoping to protect him, trying to keep him from getting involved. Or perhaps David was just watching out for himself. Either way, if Ahimelech was being exposed to danger, and he was, he had the right to know. He had the right to make his own decisions about the matter. And by lying to him, David denied him the right. But whatever David's reason for lying, the problem with lying is that it violates the truth. And God is a God of truth. God is truth. And that's why God hates lies. Proverbs 12 verse 22 says, The Lord detests lying lips. But he delights in men who are truthful. Lying can be a real temptation when you're in times of trouble. It can be a real temptation when you are on the run. Lying is convenient and it might seem like your only option at the time. But lying also demonstrates a lack of trust in God. And lying has consequences. Lying can create further problems for you and others down the road. And we will see David's lie to Ahimelech will have terrible consequences for Ahimelech and all the priests of Nob down the road. Despite David's lack of trust in God, God remains faithful to David. It reads in 1 Samuel chapter 21, verses 3 to 6. Now then, what do you have on hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever is here. And the priest answered David, I have no common bread on hand, but there is holy bread. If the young men have kept themselves from women. And David answered the priest, truly Women have been kept from us as always when I go on an expedition. The vessels of the young men are holy even when it has an ordinary journey. How much more today will their vessels be holy? So the priest gave him the holy bread, for there was no bread there but the bread of the presence, which is removed from before the Lord to be replaced by hot bread on the day it is taken away. David asks for bread, but Ahimelech doesn't have any ordinary bread. So he gives David the bread normally reserved for the priests. This was known as the bread of the presence. Every Sabbath, the priest set out 12 loaves of bread before the Lord. The 12 loaves were set out in, rows, in, in two rows and symbolized the 12 tribes of Israel. Only the priests were allowed to eat this bread and only in a special place. Read this in Leviticus 24 verses 5 to 9. So even though giving this bread to David and his men was technically against the rule, Ahimelech decided the need of life, Ahimelech decided the need for life, and sustenance was more important than this in this case. Jesus later commended Ahimelech's decision. We read in Matthew chapter 12 how the Pharisees criticized Jesus' disciples for picking some grain on the Sabbath when they were hungry. Jesus refers them back to this very incident with Ahimelech and David. He tells the Pharisees that the purpose of the law is to have mercy on others. And so Ahimelech did nothing wrong here. One author explains it this way. The true meaning of the ceremonial law of the showbread was expressed in its being given to David as an act of compassion 
and mercy providing for real need. The law was fulfilled rather than superseded. In other words, God gives us his rules for our good and protection so that we will be loving and merciful to others. And so Ahimelech did the right thing. I'll read that again. The true meaning of the ceremonial law of the showbread was expressed and it's being given to David as an act of compassion and mercy providing for real need. The law was fulfilled rather than superseded. In other words, God gives us His rules for our good and protection and so that we will be loving and merciful to others. As the Apostle Paul writes in Romans 13 verse 10, Love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Basically, when we follow God's rules, there are good results. And when we seek the good of others, we follow, good, we follow God's rules. This is the, the reason for rules. To love God and to do good to our fellow human being. And so Ahimelech does, does nothing wrong in giving David the consecrated bread in the story. It reads in 1 Samuel chapter 12 verses 7 to 9. Now a certain man of the servants of Saul was there that day, detained before the Lord. His name was Duig, the Edomite, the chief of Saul's herdsmen. Then David said to Ahimelech, Then have you not here a spear, a spear or a sword at hand? For I have brought neither my sword nor my weapons with me, because the king's business required haste. And then the priest said, the sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you struck down in the valley of Elah. Behold, it is here wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod, and you will take that, take it, for there is none but that year. And David said, There is none like that. Give it to me. The danger crops up in verse 7. Verse 7 introduces us to Duag, the Edomite. And right away, you know, this guy is going to be trouble. It's like in a film where the first, the first, when they first introduce the bad guy, there will be a whole group of people in the room when suddenly the camera lingers on one person's face. There's something shifty about their eyes and some ominous music plays in the background. And you know right away, this guy is a villain, a baddie. And you'd better watch out for him. Well, that's Duig here. Duig is a menacing, shadowy figure in this verse. As it turns out, Duig is an informer, a member of Saul's secret police. And his presence here at Nob with David and Ahimelech will be devastating. David knows that he is dealing with a dangerous situation. And so he asks Ahimelech for weapons. Ahimelech gives him the sword of Goliath, which David gladly accepts. Finally, Ahimelech gives David the bread of the presence and the sword of Goliath. Eugene Peterson writes, And with that David is on his way. He came to the holy place hungry and defenseless. He left full and equipped. Peterson also points out that in the Bible, both bread and a sword are used as symbols for the word of God. Like David, we also come to God's sanctuary for bread. <coughs> Excuse me. Like David, we also come to God's sanctuary for bread and a sword to be fed and to be equipped by God's word. David, in distress, fled to the tabernacle of God. It is great comfort in a day of trouble that we have a God to go to, to whom we may open our cases. 
and from whom we may ask and expect direction. David told Ahimelech a gross untruth. What shall we say to this? The scripture does not conceal it, and we dare not justify it. It was ill done and proved of bad consequence, for it occasioned the death of the priests of the Lord. David thought upon it afterward with regret. David had great faith and courage, yet both failed him. He fell accordingly offensively through fear and cowardice and owing to the weakness of his faith. Had he trusted God aright, he would not have used such a sorry, sinful shift for his own preservation. It is written not for us to be like, no, not in the greatest way, but for our warning. David asked of Ahimelech bread and sword. Ahimelech supposed they might eat the shoe bread. Therefore, in conclusion, as Matt Henry argues, the son of David taught from it that mercy is to be preferred to sacrifice. Those ritual observances must give way to moral duties. Duig set his foot as far with the tabernacle as David did. We little know with what hearts people come to the house of God, nor what use they will make of pretended devotion. If many come in simplicity of heart to serve their God, others come to observe their teachers and to prove accusers. Only God and the event can distinguish between a David and a Duig when both are in the tabernacle. David was a man of faith with clay feet. Nonetheless, God forgave him. So too God, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour, will forgive us. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that in you we find hope and strength. Lord, we thank you for this morning's word. A word that reminds us that we all have clay feet. Lord, that in the journey of life we will make mistakes. And we will invariably hurt ourselves and others. But Lord, thank you that your word reminds us to be careful. And so, Father, this morning we pray that in these very difficult and dark times, that you will enable us to build our faith on the rock of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. May we not look to the world for salvation, but may we find salvation in God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Lord, we thank you too that each day that you provide for us and that you guide us. And so, Lord, this morning we give to you our tithes, gifts, and offerings. And we pray, Lord, that you may use them to your glory, honor, and praise. Oh, Father, be with us at this time and strengthen us. We pray especially now that as we come to the Lord's Supper, that you will remind us that you fellowship with us and that you have a purpose for each of our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is the table of our Lord Jesus Christ. All those who love the Lord Jesus Christ and follow him in all they do are invited to share in this holy sacrament. Therefore let us lay aside the cares of this world, for now we are to be received by the Lord of hosts and by his Son, our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. As the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. So in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, I take these elements of bread and of wine and separate them from their normal use to this holy use and mystery. And as Jesus gave thanks and blessed the food on that night, let us draw near to God. 
and, off, and offer our prayers and thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious Father, it is our greatest joy to bless you, to praise you, to thank you and to worship you. For all these things we thank you. And we thank you that you are pleased to accept our worship. Holy Father, you are holy and most holy. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy and great is your glory. You so loved the world that you gave us your only begotten Son. For our sake Christ came down from heaven and by the power of the Holy Spirit he became one of us when he was born. For our sake he was crucified, he suffered death and was buried, yet on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. We praise you, our Lord, that on the great day of our Lord he will come again to judge the living and the dead and establish his eternal kingdom in heaven and on earth. Father, for the redemption in Jesus Christ your Son, and our Lord, we praise you, we bless you. We give thanks to you, O Lord our God. And now, O God, pour out your Spirit upon us and upon these gifts. May this bread and cup be for us the fellowship with the living Lord Jesus Christ. And may all who feed on the bread of life, our Lord Christ Jesus, today receive the forgiveness of sins, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the treasures of the kingdom of heaven, and the paradise of your presence. Glorious and everlasting God, the one and only God whom we worship, we praise you, we bless you, we give you thanks now and forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Attend to the words of the institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks and praise, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many. For the forgiveness of sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, as you take away the sin of the world, grant us your peace the body of Christ given for us the blood of Christ shed for us Let us pray. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquity, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy, who satisfies you with good, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Come, let us sing together our final hymn, The Church's One Foundation.
The church's one foundation is Jesus Christ the Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and sought her to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her, and for her life he died. We bear the torch that flaming fell from the hands of those who gave their lives proclaiming that Jesus died and rose. Ours is the same commission, the same glad message ours, fired by the same ambition, to you we healed our power. O Father who sustained them, O Spirit who inspired, Saviour, whose love constrained them to toil with zeal untired. From cowardice defend us, from apathy awake. Forth on your errand send us to labour for your sake. Let us pray. Almighty God, thank you for your grace and presence with us. Thank you, Lord, that as we go into this new week and as we try to cope with the world that is somewhat different, we pray for grace and wisdom. Lord, indeed, we pray in all that we do that your name may be glorified, honored, and praised. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all, now and forever. Amen. Go in God's grace and blessing, and may you have a wonderful day.